Hello again. In the last video, I introduced the concept of natural period and how to calculate it for a given structure. In this video, what we'll talk about is how this concept of natural period relates uh, to earthquake engineering and how we use that to design buildings. Uh, but first, we will start with a, a quick example, and that's with a wine glass. You see the, the small wine glass I've, I've drawn here. And it, it's almost a trope. Um, as it's come from you know, Bugs Bunny cartoons and old, old movies of the, an opera singer singing, hitting a certain high note, and the wine glass cracking. Um, and as a kid, I always wondered, well, why, why does that happen? And it occurs due to a phenomenon called resonance. Resonance. And resonance simply means that the, the natural period of our force equals the natural period of the structure, and conversely, the um, forcing frequency equals the natural frequency of the structure, since these two are, are just um, inverses of each other. So with the wine glass, um, the, the natural period of the force would be the, the period, the wavelength of the sound waves coming from the opera singer. And, and that interacts with the natural period of the wine glass. And the wine glass vibrates back and forth so much that um, the internal stresses build up and it cracks. Uh, looking at a, a slightly different example um, would be uh, well, if we go back to our child on a swing. So I'll put him on a swing here. So in the previous video I had said well the we're going to just simply pick the child up and and release him um, and he'll swing back and forth at his natural period. Well what if the child starts stationary um, or you, not this child, say you go sit on a swing and you sit there and you start kicking your legs back and forth, uh, pumping your legs well, there, there is a, a certain, certain rate, a certain frequency at which you can pump your legs and you will start to move and gain height on the swing. Um, what you are doing there is you are kicking your legs. Uh, the forcing frequency of you kicking the legs equals the natural frequency of the U swing system. Uh, likewise, if once you start moving, uh, you kick your legs too fast, or you speed up the rate, you'll find that you're not going anywhere. Um, and you're interacting and you'll come back down to, you know, this real small movements. Likewise, if you kick your legs too slow, um, you'll also find that you're not going anywhere. So this this thing resonance, the, pretty much your, the, this, this magical um, frequency at which you, um, you're pushing something or you're adding energy to it, uh, has to equal that natural period, or else you, you don't get this same interaction. And it's this resonant frequency that we want to try to avoid when we design buildings, because we don't want our buildings to become like wine glasses and build up all these internal stresses and break. Uh, we want them to, to, to ride through the earthquake um, with relative ease. So if we, we move on just a little bit on how, how do we find out what the, uh, the forcing frequency of the earthquake is. So we know how to calculate natural frequency. How do we do find out our forcing frequency? So I'll start with a, um, an example earthquake. Uh, so our vertical axis will be acceleration. Our horizontal axis will be time. And we'll just draw in a imaginary earthquake. It uh, looks something like that. Now, we can use the concept of superposition um, and, and look at the frequency content of this um, earthquake. And so what I mean by superposition is we assume that this waveform is just the series of a lot of different sine waves which are stacked on top of each other and they interact, um, sometimes they cancel out, sometimes they add to give us this specific form. So 
if we, we look at decoupling that, we'll have some long period plus um, maybe medium period plus a, yeah, we'll do some high period, so that'll be T1, T2, T3, and this is all acceleration on the vertical axis. Acceleration with respect to time. Um, and yeah, we, we can decouple these on down to however many periods we want. Um, you can look up um, a fast Fourier transform, which will explain this process in more detail. Uh, but for, for our purposes now, we just know that this, this earthquake has a series of um, different waves of different periods which add up to create it. And so if we, we find out the, the acceleration amplitude of each of these type of waves, we can plot that. Um, so if that's our acceleration with respect to period, big T. Um, well, again, this is our made-up example. We'll say if we, we're plotting those and then we draw our line. It'll look something like that. Um, and if you, you can go to, say, the USGS's website and you can see sort of frequency content of, of um, these structures at, um, at a peak ground acceleration, uh, PGA. Uh, and um, we'll put some numbers to this. So say this is, would be somewhere typically about maybe 0.3 seconds. This will be 1.0 second period. And, and that's the acceleration of the ground. Um, and that's what's going to, that's what our forcing frequency is going to be in the earthquake. And so what we want to know, we can figure out our period of our structure and we want to either avoid, hope we can work, hope that it's down here in the, the low or acceleration range at high periods, or if it does happen to be up here at 0.3, we know that it has to take a lot of these forces and we can design for it accordingly. Um, and so that worked well for, for one, one set, um, one specific earthquake, um, and we can find that for a building, but what we want to know in design is essentially a probability of what's, what are these earthquakes going to do to the building, because we don't know exactly what the earthquake's going to look like. Um, and so we use the same concept of um, finding, you know, the period content of, of given earthquakes for many different earthquakes, um, for many different types of structures. And so what we look at, as I remember, if you recall from the, the previous um, video where we had this single degree of freedom structure, this lollipop structure, and it has some given period T. Uh, it has a mass and a stiffness. Now we subject, um, Many of these, so for a whole range of T, so sort of T equals 0 0.01 up to maybe 2.5 seconds um, and many different intervals in between, we subject them to a whole lot of earthquakes. Um, and we, we run a computer analysis and we track the acceleration of this mass. And so say the mass is doing something like this we will select the absolute value of the largest acceleration and we'll plot it. And we do that for a whole bunch and we, we get sort of an average. And what we obtain is what's called a design spectra. So the spectra part is just as opposed to um, the, this plot here, which is simply the, the earthquakes period content. Spectra is what's the maximum response of a given um, period uh, structure and they look something like that so that's sort of 0 0.4 seconds that's acceleration that's t maybe that's 1.0 seconds and you find so what you do is you find the natural period of your structure um, you come up to this line you find out what your accelerations are you come over uh, you know you'll have your acceleration some percentage of uh, gravity 
and once you um, you know the mass of your structure then you can use that design for the forces of your structure and um, I think we will stop the video there and in the following video we'll talk a little bit about a case study of how this concept uh, uh, came about in the Mexico City earthquake.